The goodness of God, the mercy of God, hidden in the blessed sacrament, the voice of the Lord, who speaks to us from the throne of mercy. Come to me, all of you. Jesus, be not afraid of your Savior, O sinful soul. I make the first move to come to you, for I know that by yourself you are unable to lift yourself to me. Child, do not run away from your father. Be willing to talk openly with your God of mercy, who wants to speak words of pardon and lavish his graces on you. How dear your soul is to me. I have inscribed your name upon my hand. You are engraved as a deep wound in my heart. Soul, Lord, I hear your voice calling me to turn back from the path of sin. But I have neither the strength nor the courage to do so. Jesus, I am your strength. I will help you in the struggle. Soul, Lord, I recognize your holiness and I fear you. Jesus, my child, do you fear the God of mercy? My holiness does not prevent me from being merciful. Behold, for you I have established a throne of mercy on earth, the tabernacle. And from this throne I desire to enter into your heart. I am not surrounded by a retinue or guards. You can come to me at any moment, at any time. I want to speak to you and desire to grant you grace. So, Lord, I doubt that you will pardon my numerous sins. My misery fills me with fright. Jesus, my mercy is greater than your sins and those of the entire world. Who can measure the extent of my goodness? For you, I descended from heaven to earth. For you, I allowed myself to be nailed to the cross. For you, I let my sacred heart be pierced with a lamp thus opening wide the source of my mercy for you. Come then with trust to draw graces from this fountain. I never reject a contrite heart. Your misery has disappeared in the depths of my mercy. Do not argue with me about your wretchedness. You will give me pleasure if you hand over to me all your troubles and griefs. I shall heap upon you the treasures of my grace. So, you have conquered, O Lord, my stony heart with your goodness. In trust and humility, I approach the tribunal of your mercy, for you yourself absolve me by the hand of your representative. O Lord, I feel your grace and your peace filling my poor soul. I feel overwhelmed by your mercy, O Lord. You forgive me, which is more than I dare to hope for or could imagine. Your goodness surpasses all my desires. And now, filled with gratitude for so many graces, I invite you to my heart. I wandered like a prodigal child gone astray, but you did not cease to be my father. Increase your mercy toward me, for you see how weak I am. Jesus, child, speak no more of your misery. It is already forgotten. Listen, my child, to what I desire to tell you. Come close to my wounds and draw from the fountain of life whatever your heart desires. Drink copiously from the fountain of life, and you will not weary on your journey. Look at the splendors of my mercy, and do not fear the enemies of your salvation. Glorify my mercy. Conversation of the merciful God with a despairing soul. Jesus, O oh soul steeped in darkness, do not despair. All is not yet lost. Calm and confide in your God, who is love and mercy. But the soul, deaf even to this appeal, wraps itself in darkness. Jesus calls out again, My child, listen to the voice of your merciful Father. In the soul arises this reply, For me there is no mercy, and it falls into greater darkness, a despair which is a foretaste of hell, and makes it unable to draw near God. Jesus calls to the soul a third time, but the soul remains deaf and blind, hardened and despairing. Then the mercy of God begins to exert itself, and, without any cooperation from the soul, God grants it final grace. If this too is spurned, God will leave the soul in this self-chosen disposition for eternity. This grace emerges from the merciful heart of Jesus, and gives the soul a special light by means of which the soul begins to understand God's effort. But conversion depends on its own will. The soul knows that this, for her, is final grace. And, should it show even a flicker of goodwill, the mercy of God will accomplish the rest. My omnipotent mercy is active here. Happy the soul that takes advantage of this grace. Jesus, what joy fills my heart when you return to me. Because you are weak, I take you in my arms and carry you to the home of my Father. So, as if awakening, asks fearfully, is it possible that there yet is mercy for me? Jesus, there is, my child. You have a special claim on my mercy. Let it act on your poor soul. Let the rays of grace enter your soul. They bring with them light.
warmth and life. So, but fear fills me at the thought of my sins, and this terrible fear moves me to doubt your goodness. Jesus, my child, all your sins have not wounded my heart as painfully as your present lack of trust does. That after so many efforts of my love and mercy, you should still doubt my goodness. So, O oh Lord, save me yourself, for I perish. Be my savior. O oh Lord, I am unable to say anything more. My pitiful heart is torn asunder, but you, O Lord, Jesus does not let the soul finish, but raising it from the ground, from the depths of its misery, he but leads it into the recesses of his heart where all its sins disappear instantly, consumed by the flames of love. Jesus, here, soul, are all the treasures of my heart. Take everything you need from it, soul. O oh Lord, I am inundated with your grace. I sense that a new life has entered into me, and, above all, I feel your love in my heart. That is enough for me, O oh Lord. I will glorify the omnipotence of your mercy for all eternity. Encouraged by your goodness, I will confide to you all the sorrows of my heart. Jesus, tell me all, my child. Hide nothing from me, because my loving heart, the heart of your best friend, is listening to you. So, O oh Lord, now I see all my ingratitude and your goodness. You were pursuing me with your grace. While I was frustrating your benevolence, I see that I deserve the depths of hell for spurning your graces. Jesus interrupting, do not be absorbed in your misery. You are still too weak to speak of it, but rather gaze on my heart filled with goodness and be imbued with my sentiments. Strive for meekness and humility. Be merciful to others as I am to you. And when you feel your strength failing, if you come to the fountain of mercy to fortify your soul, you will not grow weary on your journey. So, now I understand your mercy, which protects me and like a brilliant star, leads me into the home of my father, protecting me from the horrors of hell that I have deserved, not once but a thousand times. O oh Lord, eternity will hardly suffice for me to give due praise to your unfathomable mercy and your compassion for me. Conversation of the merciful God with a suffering soul. Jesus Poor soul, I see that you suffer much and that you do not have even the strength to converse with me, so I will speak to you. Even though your sufferings were very great, do not lose heart or give in to despondency. But tell me, my child, who has dared to wound your heart? Tell me about everything. Be sincere in dealing with me. Reveal all the wounds of your heart. I will heal them, and your suffering will become a source of your sanctification. So, Lord, my sufferings are so great and numerous and have lasted so long that I become discouraged. Jesus, my child, do not be discouraged. I know your boundless trust in me. I know you are aware of my goodness and mercy. Let us talk in detail about everything that weighs so heavily upon your heart. So, there are so many different things that I do not know what to speak about first, nor how to express it. Jesus, talk to me simply, as a friend to a friend. Tell me now, my child, what hinders you from advancing in holiness? So, poor health detains me on the way to holiness. I cannot fulfill my duties. I am as useless as an extra wheel on a wagon. I cannot mortify myself or fast to any extent, as the saints did. Furthermore, nobody believes I am sick, so that mental pain is added to those of the body, and I am often humiliated. Jesus, how can anyone become holy in such circumstances? True, my child, all that is painful, but there is no way to heaven except the way of the cross. I followed it first. You must learn that it is the shortest and surest way. So, Lord, there is another obstacle on the road to holiness. Because I am faithful to you, I am persecuted and suffer much. Jesus, it is because you are not of this world that the world hates you. First, it persecuted me. Persecution is a sign that you are following in my footsteps faithfully. So, my Lord, I am also discouraged because neither my superiors nor my confessors understand my interior trials. A darkness clouds my mind. How can I advance? All this discourages me from striving for the heights of sanctity. Jesus, well, my child, this time you have told me a good deal. I realize how painful it is not to be understood, and especially by those whom one loves and with whom Helen has been very open. But suffice it to know that I understand all your troubles and misery. I am pleased by the deep faith you have, despite everything in my representatives. Learn from this that no one will understand a soul entirely that is beyond human ability. 
Therefore, I have remained on earth to comfort your aching heart and to fortify your soul, so that you will not falter on the way. You say that a dense darkness is obscuring your mind. But why at such times do you not come to me, the light who can in an instant pour into your soul more understanding about holiness than can be found in any books? No confessor is capable of teaching and enlightening a soul in this way. Know too that the darkness about which you complain I first endured in the Garden of Olives when my soul was crushed in mortal anguish. I am giving you a share in those sufferings because of my special love for you. And in view of the high degree of holiness, I am intending for you in heaven. A suffering soul is closest to my heart. Soul, one more thing, Lord. What should I do when I am ignored and rejected by people, especially by those on whom I had a right to count in times of greatest need? Jesus, my child, make the resolution never to rely on people. And trust yourself completely to my will, saying, Not as I want, but according to your will, O God, let it be done unto me. These words spoken from the depths of one's heart can raise a soul to the summit of sanctity in a short time. In such a soul I delight, such a soul gives me glory, such a soul fills heaven with fragrance of her virtue. But understand that the strength by which you bear sufferings comes from frequent communions. So approach this fountain of mercy often, to draw with the vessel of trust whatever you need. So, thank you, Lord, for your goodness in remaining with us in this exile as the God of mercy, and blessing us with the radiance of your compassion and goodness. It is through the light of your mercy that I have come to understand how much you love me.